Thank you to all the attendees who've just joined us. My name is Bindu Panikar from TNA and welcome to our presentation. For the next 10 minutes or so, we'll have uh, our team from TNA North America uh, chatting with us. Uh, we'll discuss TNA's recipe for precision processing and how it helps to reduce material and utility costs as well as footprint. While we'll walk through several key considerations, um, we're going to continue this discussion from three o'clock onwards as well. And we're going to reveal there a secret, a special secret ingredient. So please be sure to stay on with us after three o'clock as well. Um, let's just start talking about um, precision processing. Uh, we have with us uh, Patrick Avalanche, who is a uh, regional sales manager uh, with TNA North America. We have Marcus Jones, who is product development team leader. And we have uh, Daniel Luna, who is processing solution specialist. Uh, thank you all for Hello. joining us today. Um, Dan, if I could uh, start with you, please. The word precision is often used when referring to food processing. And if you could just elaborate or explain to us what we mean by precision processing. Sure, Bindu. Uh, so we define precision processing as maintaining the parameters required during operations to produce a particular product. For instance, a fried snack would have a consistent frying curve. Precision processing at every step of the cooking process is critical, you know, especially for fried foods. Uh, manufacturers of fried foods can deliver unique flavors and enhance appearance through color development and surface texture. And each phase of the product handling, the frying, coating, and seasoning impacts their brand success. Thank you for that, Dan. Um, Patrick, if I could come to you now and talk about what are the common challenges um, to precision processing? And, and what about subsequent uh, cost reductions? Well, uh, Bindu, um, this workflow isn't always easy and there can be many pain points along the way. So uh, the challenges of processing traditional fried foods vary depending on the type of product and what taste, textures, appearance, and the bite uh, the brand is trying to achieve. Um, additionally, consumers demand uh, change. So, you know, there's always, they're always looking for, um, we're always looking for new um new taste, new bites, uh, new experience. So while frying remains a popular cooking method, uh, they also, consumers are looking for healthier products, uh, but they still want it to look great and taste great. Uh, yeah. so which means, you know, uh, we need to different for the manufacturers to differentiate themselves. Uh, they're really looking at new ingredients and advanced uh, processing techniques. Yeah, you're right. Health and well-being seems to be a common theme that's here to stay. Marcus, there is this um, mindset um, that the consumer is always right, and that you know our systems need to be accommodating to change. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, effective cooking and frying systems help manufacturers respond to increasing discerning customer demands while providing desired flavor and texture. Uh, the result the product with broad appeal. Manufacturers need to figure out what works best for the customers, um, whether it's dedicated single product line for potato chips or flexible line frying solutions for multiple products. Making that determination early allows for smoother production and uh, makes it easier to meet st stringent safety and hygiene regulations. Of course, the goal is to maximize yield and increase value propositions uh, while growing sales and increasing profits. Yeah, uh, if we were to discuss, you know, taking off from that, what are some of the key principles or tenets um, or ingredients that inform this approach? So one of the things is reliable data, you know, is really a must, it's really needed. Uh, inefficiencies and in processing, you know, they come at a considerable cost to the plant managers, consumers, and, and the environment. 
So uh, collecting detail and reliable data allows the manufacturers to operate the factories safely and while still meeting the demands for this high production volume that are typically associated with these lines. Control systems are important. They help to produce quality products, they minimize the waste, and of course they reduce the labor and maintenance costs. So the integration of sophisticated sensors we use to monitor temperature, the moisture, oil percentage, and the throughput helps uh, the flavor come through as it should. Uh, these elements can be customized. Uh, TNA, we use uh, proprietary controls. So we can build the systems to the needs of the customer using these proprietary controls. So another, another factor is multifunctionality. Uh, so this also helps to reduce costs and footprints. So let's say we use a fryer to make more than one product. So uh, efficiency and multifunctionality are at the heart of cost reduction and footprint reduction. So uh, instead of having two fryers, we can have one fryer mm -hmm. do uh, multiple products. Uh, one uh, example is a Con Conti Pro continuous fryer. It cleans, cuts, and cooks potatoes fully for chip production. Uh, they come in one end raw and out the other ready to eat. So these machines typically offer high energy efficiency with multiple circuit heaters. And we also uh, offer increased oil flow efficiency thanks to our patented OptiFlow technology. The secret in our OptiFlow technology mm -hmm. is that we use multiple small oil outlets instead of four or five big ones. Um, Marcus, would you like to add on to that, please? Sure. Uh, another uh, notable example would be the uh, Food Design Batch Pro. Uh, it can produce a, a wide range of different bites and levels of crisp crispness uh, because it's a unique combination of burner and control. Uh, the machine makes up to 600 pounds of product with a 75% smaller footprint than other manufacturers, all while retaining up to an 85% uh, degree of efficiency, um, which I believe is in the market. Digital sensors uh, monitor oil volume and guarantee correct levels of multiple temperature and ensure the select frying curve is matched while sediment removal systems filter the waste. Uh, that way the fryer uh, is easier to maintain and clean, lowering equipment costs and increasing safety. It results uh, is a high quality, consistently crisp snack that provides the overall efficiency of frying line and mm -hmm. leads to fewer rejects. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for those insights. And I'm sure the, the audience has some questions for all three of you. And I will talk about that secret ingredient that I mentioned uh, at the beginning when we started, but I just wanted to uh, open the floor to the audiences for any questions that you may have, because we are going to continue this discussion. We have some people joining in at three o'clock on this platform. So we just wanted to allow some time for that. Meanwhile, if you would like to ask questions, you have any feedback, would like to share some perspective, the floor is open to you. Okay, we'll still have to wait for another four minutes before I reveal the secret ingredient. Um, meanwhile, if you'd like uh, to know more information about this session, we have white papers, we have a lot of resources available, educational content, case studies, um, so brochures. So they are all available for download on this platform. We also had two sessions prior to this yesterday and day before. Uh, one was on packaging and the other was on distribution conveying systems. So please be sure if you've missed those sessions, you can um, you know, look at the videos, you can share those videos with your colleagues perhaps or anybody that you think would find it interesting. And you can also stay on uh, or join us tomorrow for our seasoning session. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, this particular roundtable today, we're going to discuss 
reducing costs and footprint with precision snack processing. Uh, thank you for those of you who had registered for Pack Expo Connects and you know joined us a little earlier. And for those of you who are joining us right now, I'll just give you a quick synopsis of what we were talking about earlier. We mainly uh, focused on key tenets of precision processing that can drive opportunities for utility and material saving and improve product quality. These include agility to keep up with changing consumer demands, um, reliable data collection, multifunctionality. And of course, you know, I left everybody on a little bit of a cliffhanger saying that we're going to reveal uh, the secret ingredient to precision processing and um, subsequent material and cost savings uh, it yields. Uh, before diving in, I just wanted to let everybody know that this roundtable is meant to be interactive. So please ask questions. You know, you can unmute your microphones, chat with us. You can add to some of the points that the uh, panelists are talking about. We want to keep it interactive. Uh, I've got some questions that came in earlier on. So I'm going to ask on your behalf and uh, you can feel free to add on at that time or you know, we can get to your questions at the end of the session using the chat function. Um, we also have uh, a lot of resources available, I said earlier on as well, that are relevant to today's topic. So if you want more information than what we're discussing here today, you'll find a mix of white papers, videos, educational content on this platform. So they're all available on featured resources under the details function. Uh, please note again that this session is being recorded and we are going to post this video on this on this platform. So you can always come back here, go through the session, or if you feel that you want to share it with someone, uh, you can do that as well. Um, before we get started, I want to introduce and welcome our um, panelists today. We have with us from our North America team, uh, Daniel Luna. He's a processing solution specialist. We have Patrick Avalanche, who's the regional sales manager, and Marcus Jones, who is product development team leader at TNA North America. So let's start with where we left off, uh, you know, promising to reveal the secret ingredient. And Dan, uh, over to you to talk about the secret ingredient or ingredients, as you were saying. <laughs> Thank you, Bindu. So yeah, happy to. Uh, so one secret ingredient is integration. Uh, you need the fryer, seasoning system, packaging system, all working together seamlessly, you know, preventing the bottlenecks, stoppages, and uh, any food waste. Ensuring that these systems all talk to each other, that's what integration is about. Uh, not only the uh, controls, but also, you know, mechanically and, and connecting all of these together. So streamlining the data acquisition and reporting uh, along with the system testing and syncing the controls all, all critical pieces of the integration puzzle. Uh, amid the COVID-19, we're only going to see operations become more automated. And that's another factor that makes integration a necessity. The other mm -hmm. secret ingredient, food manufacturers recognize fryers and seasoning equipment physically change the raw product. And that packaging is crucial in how the product is presented to customers. Here at TNA, Fryers, seasoning, and packaging equipment are all developed and manufactured within our own company, ensuring this equipment is properly designed and selected for the right product. And it's a team effort. We have engineers, process specialists, all combining together to uh, make sure the equipment is designed correctly. Thank you. Thank you for revealing the secret ingredient or ingredients, Dan. Patrick, are there other factors that make integration, well, integral? Well, uh, Bindu, you know, as we mentioned earlier at the, during the Connect uh, session, uh, fast changing consumer demand is another obstacle that requires great flexibility for the, the equipment and uh, a lot of agility from uh, the food manufacturers. Um, you know, the consu consumers are still buying uh, fried foods but they're looking at healthy years, uh, but they still want, you know, within that healthier product, they still want that taste and that, you know, that appeal and that satisfaction. So 
with that in mind, you know, the, the, the manufacturers are using new ingredients and new techniques to, um, to, to, to prepare the product. That's where, you know, a product like the TNA equipment that we mentioned earlier uh, on the frying side uh, allows them to, to use different recipes and work with the product to achieve that, uh, those new products with um, using the, the frying curve of the product and achieve uh, appealing product for their consumers. Thank you for that. Um, Marcus, I really wanted to come to you and ask you, do you see many brands um, that are adapting to new formulations? Marcus. Uh -oh. um, Dan, if you can take that, please. Yeah, sure, no problem. So right now what you're seeing, brands are, are, are also getting very creative. So they're going beyond the classical chip recipe and experimenting with products like sweet potatoes and other root products. Um, they're also doing a variety of seasonings. So for right now, frying is still the most effective heat transfer method you know, available for delivering these uh, mm -hmm. unique flavors and these uh, enhanced product experience appearances. So just in a variety of different food products and snacks, um, consumers, again, you're looking for healthier products. So some of the other root products are being used to come in along with potato chips. So the processing operations, uh, they need to deal with a greater variety and more, more skews in their, in their factories. No, thank you for that, Dan. Patrick? Where does flexibility fit into the scheme of things? Um, how does it translate to material and utility uh, saving? And you know, all three of you can weigh in here, but Patrick, if we could start with you, please. Yeah, Bindu, I mean, with them, it works as uh, Daniel mentioned earlier, it's not only the processing, it goes through the packaging, uh, seasoning and processing equipment where you want the, the ability to change to do very quick changeovers. Um, so you can easily clean the equipment, you've got a reduced uh, footprint. Um, with that quick changeover, you get more agility to, to change from one product to another, uh, depending on what the consumers are, are, are requiring. And you're not just, um, you know, you're not uh, stuck within one product with one uh, processing equipment. That same line can produce a wide range of products uh, which is great for the for the manufacturers, so they can address different demands from across the market. Um, we want to reduce the energy consumed by the equipment. Uh, we want uh, lower water uh, utilization uh, when we process the equipment, like uh, you know during the washing of the of the of the potato uh, potatoes, for example. Uh, we want to minimize the the ingredient waste by maximizing the 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 the, 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 the quality of the process. Um, all the factors uh, add up to a significant savings, uh, especially you know as you uh, scale and large uh, large lines, and you start to have a very high throughput. A bit like what we mentioned with um, with um, our guest uh, Bill Benzel yesterday on the session for packaging. You know when you do uh, two million pounds of pretzels uh, a week, um, and you you a little any little gain is a lot of product. So it's very important to, to look at all the aspects uh, from the packaging, seasoning, processing, where can we gain? Uh, and say little savings everywhere adds up to a, a very large uh, overall saving. Thank you, thank you for that, Patrick. Dan, Marcus, if you'd like to share your opinion. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, when you're dealing with uh, flexibility, you've got uh, multiple products different products that are being made on the same line. So um, to be able to have a smooth changeover, you know, that's really critical to, you know, having a smooth production changeover. Uh, the, you also have to meet stringent, you know, safety, food safety and hygiene requirements. Uh, all this, you're trying to do this while still maximizing your yield overall. So um, again, Flexibility, it's, it sounds easy, but it is really difficult to design around that uh, when you have different products being made. And at TNA, we're good at that. 
Ideally, the result then is a well-flavored product, and this allows the manufacturer to keep producing various products, change their products as the market changes for them. I know a lot of manufacturers probably ran into this with the, with the COVID-19 mm -hmm. situation, having to change the products to meet their the demand, a change in demand, uh, you know, from the market. So again, many requirements for flexibility, and um, you know, we're good at that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Patrick. Um, earlier on, you know, Dan was talking about uh, equipment integration. I, I wanted to get your thoughts on the role of equipment and how it facilitates precision and processing. Yes, uh, Bindu. I mean, automation and integrations are key to um, efficient uh, manufacturing. Uh, you, you're not looking at just one piece of equipment. You're looking at, you know, for us to supply a solution. So we want to be able to bring in the potatoes at the front of the line and get them all the way into the bag. And that's what TNA is good at. You know, it's, we, we can take the raw product and process the, 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 the most efficient way that the, the potatoes, slice them, wash them, fry them. Then we're gonna transport gently the product to uh, seasoning. Season and apply a very um, high level of uh, accuracy on seasoning so that you always get the best um, uh, product and a very consistent product and then put it in a bag that's gonna be presented to your um, customers. So it's very important to have a, a complete solution that's fully integrated. And when it's integrated, you benefit from all the equipment talking to each other, knowing what's happening. So you get more efficiency. So you, every piece of equipment will raise that efficiency. So we can, uh, by talking to each other, we know what's happening. We're in control of the line and uh, we can uh, see those, uh, those figures go up and be um, uh, making, obviously, it be more profitable for the manufacturers. Yeah. And, and what about, what are your thoughts about rejects, you know? Uh, what about waste, minimizing waste? Waste is the, is the enemy of the plant. You know, we, we always talk about going faster, uh, going, you know, doing things uh, at bla blazing speeds. But one of the, you know, we, when we go to plants, or, you know, Daniel, myself, and uh, all, all the team, you know, we, a big focus uh, is to, uh, how can we eliminate waste? You know, in, in packaging is using integration. Uh, make sure that the scale, the bagger, the decoder, the metal detection are all talking to each other. In, in processing is to make sure that we have the right uh, control on the oil level, that we have uh, sensors that can look at how much oil is in the fryer, uh, are we replenishing the fryer properly with oil, do we have the OptiFlow that we mentioned earlier, having a nice flow of oil that can fry the product consistently across the whole width of the fryer so we don't get burnt product, so when we Whatever goes in, goes out, and is quality to go into the bag. When it's in seasoning, it's applying the right amount of seasoning so we don't get any over or under a seasoned product, uh, which is very important. That's where you know, the consumer is going to take the chip, put them, eat the chip, and if it's too salty, they'll, they won't like it. If it's under salty, they think, okay, it's not the flavors I'm used to. So really get, getting that... Uh, integration and quality overall and minimizing waste anywhere you can is where that's your, your bottom line. You know, it's really how many bags, good bags are going out of the plant is the, the goal for any manufacturer. Thank so, you, thank uh, you, Patrick. Dan, what about waste disposal itself? Uh, yeah, to further talk about uh, uh, Patrick's comments there, um, so of course we build a lot of our machines, a lot of fryers with a uh, sediment system integrated into the system. Mm -hmm. So we're removing the waste online uh, and filtering oil online instead of offline. So this allows uh, operators, manufacturers to continue operating for longer periods of time and um, it just uh, increase their, their, their yields and their production. So the other thing related to precision processing, of course, is, is all the sensors that we have to monitor all the various uh, parameters that are on the fryer, on the seasoning. And some of the neat things that we have, of course, is a variety of uh, sensors to monitor the oil level in the fryer, uh, temperature. We have multiple temperature sensors in the fryer just to make sure that, that we're developing the curve 
that's specific for that particular product. But the other thing is um, one thing that TNA does that's unique is we do a lot of weighing of the product, whether it's a raw product or a product coming out of the fryer, we weigh the product. Uh, this allows us to check to make sure that the fryer is operating at the op optimum level with the right amount of product. It also helps us to ensure that the right amount of product is going into the seasoning. And that, that really controls the seasoning, the amount of product that we weigh going into the seasoning system then develops uh, the, the, the programming for how much seasoning or oil to apply. So all those things together uh, just combine to allow us to have this precision processing and this full integration of the line. And, you know, it, it sounds like a lot. Does this whole process of integration make the entire, well, process more complex? I mean, we do, you know, when you look at integration, it's a, it's a time saver. Um, I, I'll, give, I'll give you an example from when, uh, back in the days when I started with TNA and we used to have a scale, uh, we used to have a bagger, we used to have a, a independent decoder and a metal detector, Every, everything at their own controls. So when you wanted to do a changeover, you'd go and change the program of the scale, you'd go and change the program on the bagger. You would hope that you've chosen the right one that match each other, select the decoder. Now you, the operator goes on, on one screen and press one button and everything is ready. And the, that integration makes it much quicker, much more efficient and you eliminate um, user's error. Uh, it's the same for the rest. So now the, bag, the, the packaging is talking to the seasoning saying, that's the, the product I'm running. The seasoner knows it's gonna, it, that's what you're, you want. You want that many pounds per hour with that amount of seasoning. Then at the back of that, the fryer knows how many pounds are going in. We weighing the, the, the potatoes going in. We, we, everything is controlled uh, with one big control. And it looks, we look at the big picture, not just one piece of equipment. So integration really gives you avoid any gaps in the equipment. You, you can look at everything. So you're a lot more efficient overall, and, which is a big money saver. Thank you for that, Patrick. We, you know, we've been talking about the role of equipment in precision processing, how flexibility is integral, facilitating waste reduction. But if we were to look, and that's from you know, a TNA's end, but if we were to look at the manufacturer's role and you know, talk about what, what is it that manufacturers can do to improve quality control and ensure that all their products can meet their consumers' standards, Dan, if I could request you to please elaborate on that. Yeah, sure. So uh, most definitely what we see in the plant, what we see manufacturers doing, uh, they're collecting detail and reliable data uh, to make sure, first of all, uh, we have safe operation, right? And then of course, an efficient operation, but also manufacturers, uh, they need to, uh, to obtain information for operations and quality departments. So one thing they can one thing they can do is they need to confirm that their equipment has the sensors to provide the key data that they need to make sure they're producing a safe and consistent product. So um, I know it sounds complicated. You're saying, well now we have all these new sensors, now we have all this information, but it's important to note that TNA um, does do for the most part, we do uh, on-site testing with new sensors and so forth to ensure not only that they operate correctly, but that they can meet the stringent demands of the, uh, of the sanitation requirements. In particular with fryers, you know, we have uh, caustic boil-out situations. So it's important that we test, these, test this equipment and prove that it'll last, you know, month after month after month, years, uh, to make sure the customers got good information all the times. So the control systems, they play a crucial role in ensuring that the product, the customer, that the manufacturer is making a quality, quality product. Um, and the sensors, they can uh, monitor, make sure they have the right amount of moisture, they have the right amount of oil as we. Well. So, and as, and as well, we've talked about this waste, it needs to be minimized. So, correct conveyance, correct operation, 
all that contributes to you know complete line efficiency. Uh, so all of that just combines together to give you what you need to ensure uh, precision processing and that you're meeting your quality standards. Thank you for that, Dan. I mean, you know, you said that there's a, there's a lot to take in, but I'm, I'm just going to add on to that, that sustainability has become an important agenda today. And I'm referring here to sustainable business practices. What is the best way for manufacturers to reduce processing waste? Well, Bindu, I mean, uh, you need to decrease your footprint um, and, and lower your energy consumption. And by that, what I mean is making the smartest design as a complete solution. So it's back to saying we're not looking at one piece of equipment. We're looking at a complete solution approach where, you know, we, when we talk about the chips, it's uh, capturing and draining oil, uh, making sure we're filtering that oil so we can reuse it and not waste uh, any of that. So we maximize the processes. Um, when it's uh, packaging, it's making sure we have a standby mode. So we don't, when the machine is not being utilized, uh, we are going to be um, not using uh, energy on those machines, reducing air consumption anywhere you can on the equipment. Um, every single part of the equipment is, is very important. Um, with, with the OptiFlow, for example, we ensure that the chips aren't uh, under or overcooked. So we, we're making sure that we're not using too much energy to achieve something we, mm -hmm. we, we know where we don't need it. So we, we, we use every bit of energy that's just required just to, to make the, pro the best product we can. Yeah, and all of these considerations uh, seem really critical to success, I especially at a time like this when companies are really grappling with staying agile and meeting you know, short-term challenges uh, that have risen on uh, account of COVID and any new challenges that could come in the long run. Dan, could you tell us that how can TNA help uh, companies integrate line equipment and help manufacturers to really overcome these obstacles? Yeah, well, so one, one method is, you know, a scalable production line solution from TNA, you know, processing and packaging. So we could start off at, you know, a certain level and it can be scaled up. Uh, the second solution is a flexible line solution from, from TNA. Uh, this would allow manufacturers to make uh, different products, multiple products on the same line and uh, allow them to really meet their, their market demands. And, um, you know, the way we operate, uh, some customers may purchase, you know, a few components to start, but then they upgrade later on to a full line or additional equipment that in, increases their, their performance, you know, whether it's in frying, seasoning or packaging. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, before I open the floor to audience interaction, Patrick, Marcus, if you'd like to add to that or, you know, share anything that I may have missed out on asking today. Well, one of the points we, we can, you know, we, we as TNA, we really uh, want to be a partner uh, from the early stage of research and development. And, you know, we believe in uh, equipment training, making sure that um, and we can do that in, in several ways. I mean, we, we train operators in the plant. We do online training. We also can do it in other TNA centers. Um, we want to offer maintenance support uh, if in, on nights, weekends, uh, and we're very happy to help uh, develop new recipes. If, uh, if one of our uh, partners want to you know, develop new products, uh, we have um, uh, R&D centers where we can work on new bites, new flavors, new uh, new product and new recipes with new ingredients. Uh, so yeah, we, we really like to look at it as a as a complete solution approach. Not a, we're not an equipment supplier. We are really a, a solution and partner uh, for the food industry. Thank you, thank you, Patrick. Marcus, is there anything that you'd like to add at this point? Uh, no, I can do. Thank you. Uh, I think you. Dan and, and Patrick uh, said it very well. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, open the floor to the audience for questions. So please feel free to, you know, unmute your microphone or you can put the question in the chat section as well. Uh, 
all the tough questions to Marcus. <laughs> I think I asked all the questions <laughs> on behalf of the audience here today. So I, I really hope that you found these discussions uh, insightful. If you have any questions that might come up later, uh, you can always connect with us and our team and find out more about all the solutions that we offer. Uh, we have all those resources available on this platform. And we also post latest updates and the latest news from TNA on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, we also have another round table coming up tomorrow. So that's one's on seasoning. Uh, we're going to discuss new flavors, quick changeover solutions, how to minimize waste and increase efficiencies. So please do join us tomorrow. And thank you all for joining us today and enjoy the rest of